Hey you guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to make a basic Hello World Android application. So first thing you're going to need to do is download Eclipse. It's an SDK just like Xcode is to make iPhone apps. Except Eclipse is the easiest SDK to use when developing Android apps. A lot easier than Androids. Well, this is pretty much what Android uses. So when you have Eclipse downloaded, just open up Eclipse by Galileo. And then you can go on the website which I'll try to provide in the description below, along with everything else you need. And creating an Android developer account is a lot cheaper than creating a an account for Apple to create, like, iPhone apps. This is only $25 one time. Um, they only get, like, 15 or 20% of your apps that you sell. Um, all my apps I make for free which I recommend doing, not setting up a merchant account, account until you're completely ready and you're good enough because people will not buy it and it'll just be a waste so it's better to attract customers and use your stuff rather than just sell them and nobody buy them. So after everything's downloaded then you want to go into Eclipse and you're going to need to download some plugins which is kind of confusing so you might want to go on the Android website to look that up but I'm sorry I can't not, I cannot tell you how to so after you have everything installed, you can pause the video if you need to. So after everything's done, go into File, New, Android Project. And then let's just name this Hello World. Or you, And there's a new Android Open Source Project 2.2. Um, I can't use that one because it's just really confusing with this. So I just recommend using Android 2.1 for right now. Because as you can see right here in the samples, it says Target has no samples. So it'll get really confusing, so I'm just going to do Android 2.1. Let's just call our application Hello World. Package name is world. The activity is going to be Hello World Activity. And your main SDK version is going to be 2. So then click finish. So this is what you want to do. You want to select your project from the list and then go into res. Res layout, main XML. This is your main, um, this is going to be your complete layout. Like this is the main, main part of the layout. Your Android manifest. This is a file you don't want to mess with right here. Um, your instrumentation, your permissions, you don't need any of this. Application, you would need this. Your icon file would go in Android HDPI, LDPI, or MDPI. The icon itself is going to be HDPI, so all you have to do when you make your icons that look like this, you're going to make the HDPI 72 by 72 pixels of Photoshop. An LDPI, which is going to be the smallest, 32 by 32 pixels. And the MDPI, the medium, is going to be a 48 by 48 pixels. So after you've learned, no, after you, since you know that now, you would drag your HDPI and your LDPI under the select, like the correct folders. And then this is going to be drawable. These are your drawables. The ones that are used as pictures. They have to be a .png file to be used in any part. <clears throat> as an example, if I want to input a picture, let's just use this Mac OS X, I would put it in my MDPI, which is a lot easier. And you see how there's an X? Because it has to be named an icon. And here's a trick that I like to do. See, so put icon with two N's, and then you can remember. And then it'll let it go. So then click on your linear layout. And this is just to make a background for it now. Click on your drawable, and then you see the icon. That's the one that I made. If you click on this one, it'll come up like that, but you don't want that. So then let's just change this to ends, the icon. And now, now it has the Mac OS X. Android is really strict with importing photos into your app. It's pretty hard to do. You can't just drag a photo in. It'll have so many problems. It'll mess up the code. So I recommend setting your linear layout wallpaper under properties, like how I just did. So it has to be selected. If I don't select it, it's not selected. Alright, so then this is your text view. It's this Hello World 
and Hello World activity. So to change that, scroll down, and then it should say text. I just press it. There we go. The text is at string slash hello. We can just change that. Let's just make it say hello world. And then it'll come up up there as in hello world. And just save that. All right, next thing you want to do is pretty much whatever else you want to do. So let's just put in some basic things under the Views tab. As you can see on your left side under the Views tab, there's a gesture overlay, overlay, a surface view, a view, a view stub, an analog clock, and so on. So let's just put in an autocomplete text view. And then it comes up like this. Let's just say you're making an app and you want the, to use it, the user to type in something in the autocomplete text view and you have all those things in the way so when you run the app that's what it'll say and that'll be annoying for the user so I want to go down here under text and erase that and I know that's really small but now watch this is what you want to do scroll up until you say until it says minimum width you want to put 50 px 5 yeah 50 px I'll scratch that I'm sorry 500 pixels then it'll fill the whole screen so now, when the user launches the app, it'll say, it'll just be this, and ready to type right here, and there won't be any lag or any confusion for them. Another thing you can add is a button. I'm not completely amazing with this. Um, I know how to do the basics. Um, I'm not amazing with the buttons and the views and changing, but if you, let's just throw in a button, just so you can learn how to actually just, it's just basic. And then let's do the same thing with the text. It'll come up small. And then you want to look for minimum width. And let's just put that at 50 pixels. And 100 pixels, that's good. All right. And then we should just add some text to it. Um, no text. Let's just call it button. So now it'll come up. This is a plain button, pretty clean looking, and just save it. Make sure, I really like to just save every so often, just to make sure about everything's all right, just in case you mess up, you know what I'm saying? So, that's another basic. Now let's add a, ch a, a check, oh my god, I'm sorry. I use it on stutter, just add a checkbox. So now it'll come up with all these little symbols, that's the ID, at plus ID slash checkbox zero one. So now let's scroll down to our properties list until the text comes up. Now let's just call, let's just erase that. And now it's just a normal checkbox. So when you click it and the user selects it, it'll just become green and it'll stay green. And then there's a conometer. And it's just pretty much like a hit marker or count. But that's pretty useless, depending on what you're doing. A date picker. It lets you select the month, the day, and the year. So that's pretty just basic. You just leave that like that. Um, and edit text. It's pretty much like the autocomplete text view. Um, it's actually the same. It's just a little bit smaller, and it lets you just edit it. So you have your date picker, your autocomplete text view, your button, and your checkbox. These are all the basic things that you can put into your application. That's not too complex. Or you can throw in a digital clock too. And I know how it's so small. And you can make that bigger. Let's just go in where it says text. And every time you like save it or something, you can see the clock will change. But on the user's phone, it'll come up like change. So you won't have to worry about that. So let's just make this a little bit bigger so the user will be able to see it. Under text size, just make it 30 px. That's good. Always put a PX after everything, because if you don't, then it'll just go gray and it'll say no most of the time, or it won't work and it'll come out dumb, so you won't like all that. So make sure you put a PX after everything. And another thing, if you want the whole bar to be filled, just put 500 PX, or you put 50, 51, and you can just mess with it, it'll go longer and longer every time. So you put 500 PX, and that'd be good. So as you can see, we have our digital clock right now. Um, I'm not going to show you guys all these things you want to understand. So, the seek bar. It's pretty much like a little 
tab you pull on your brightness, 